the Thursday session. Um, the plan today is to focus on resource management and time tracking. Um, but before we go into a demo and discussion around that, we want to quickly um, introduce you to Marquee 360 and some of the fun Productivity Thursday webcasts we have planned for 2021. Um, here's a quick snapshot into what to expect for the next few months. Uh, we also have a link that lists all our Productivity Thursday sessions, which we'll post in the chat window so you can register for it if of interest. But the idea here is to pick a topic on a monthly basis um, and walk you through a demo and kind of show you some of the functionality on the Microsoft um, Project and Portfolio Management Platform. If you have any suggestions for topics that are of interest to you, specific to your organization, please let us know and we can add them to the list as well. In addition to Productivity Thursdays, we're starting a new series in 2021. Um, it's essentially a Solution 101 series, um, and this actually came up through feedback from our webcast sessions from the past few months where um, some of our users are asking for some basics on technology and tools that they've heard about, and they just want to get a better sense of what these uh, Microsoft applications can do for them. So the first one next month is Microsoft Teams, which most of you are hopefully familiar with, but the idea here is to not only give you the, the high level overview of Microsoft Teams, but also dive a little bit deeper and show you how um, we as um, working with customers and as, as consultants um, live and breathe in Microsoft Teams uh, pretty much through our engagement with customers. So we're going to show you some quick tips and tricks as well. And then through Q1, we're going to focus on the Power Platform, Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power BI. And these are more high-level sessions, um, mostly to give you an idea of what these applications can do for you and give you some examples and use cases as well. So if you're interested in the Solution 101 series, please do sign up as well, and we'll post a link in the chat window. So um, really quick, before we actually go into specifically resource management, um, we wanted to introduce Marquee 360, and um, I saw some familiar names attending this afternoon. So if you've attended our previous sessions, you know who we are, and I think we have some existing customers and folks that we've spoken to as well. Um, but essentially, we're a Microsoft partner. We are um, focused on project and portfolio management, as well as the Power Platform. And what we do at Marquee 360 is we extend the Microsoft 365 platform using Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power BI to build certain business processes into the application itself. So um, you'll see some of that today in the demo as well. Uh, we work with customers all across the US and internationally, and um, our major success focus here at Marquee 360 is customer success and just providing that subject matter expertise and the trusted advisor relationship with our customers through the implementation journey. I have a few colleagues here with me on the call this afternoon, um, which I can quickly let them introduce themselves. Um, Neil. Hi everybody, Neil Alcott. I'm a senior solutions architect here at Marquee 360, and I'll be doing the presentation today. Erin, do you want to say a quick hi? Sure. Hi everybody. I'm the marketing manager at Marquee 360. You guys have probably seen a few emails from me. Thanks for joining us today. And Erin is um, the brains behind all the different webcasts we do, so um, I'm sure you've heard from her. Um, and then my name is Deepika Gandhi, and I'm a customer success manager here um, at Marquee 360, and I work super closely with customers just around um, the Microsoft needs, and then we also work really closely with your Microsoft Teams to get a sense of you know, licensing and just overall roadmap that you might need for making a decision on platform. Um, we kind of talked about this a little bit, um, but essentially, at Marquee 360, we're constantly building applications on the Power Platform. 
Um, so, you know, we have some prepackaged applications that we can share with you as well as custom apps that are needed for um, for your business. But our focus here is primarily on um, the Microsoft project and portfolio management platform using Teams and Planner and bringing the whole Power Apps, Power Automate story into the Microsoft 365 uh, platform as well. So we kind of help you really make sense of the different pieces, the different tools that you own as a part of your licensing agreement, and we kind of bring them together in different use cases, if you will. Um, just want to quickly mention our prepackaged solutions. Um, so we we've done a few of these productivity Thursday sessions already. We have the project intake. This is the whole ideation piece. I think we did this um, about a couple months ago. We have the project online and Teams integration app, uh, which is also one of our pre-configured prepackaged solutions. We have a Teams governance app, and we're going to run a special webcast on this as well, but essentially the Teams governance app enables organizations to automate the creation of new teams. So anyone within an organization can request a team and then um, it can go through an approval process and a team can be created with a pre um, configured uh, template, if you will. So this has been a very hot topic for a lot of our customers right now with Microsoft Teams being important for rollout. Um, and then we have some other apps, Timesheet app, and you'll hear some of these different applications from Neil as he goes through the demo. Did I miss any app, Neil? Cost tracker, a financial app? Yeah, there's <clears throat> there's other ones that are in the pipeline that you know will be released shortly. So project financials. Um, so hopefully you'll see some of those in the in the upcoming um, sessions. Um, so today's session is on resource management and time tracking. Um, and the idea here is to kind of show you the resource management and timesheet capability in Project Online. Um, and then I believe, Neil, they're going to touch on some project for the web, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then bringing it all together and showing you some automations and just of a timesheet app that's in the works. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Any questions? So if you can use the chat window through the presentation to ask questions, uh, and then I'm going to hand it over to Neil, and he's going to start the demo. All right, let me share my screen. <clears throat> Let me know if everybody can see my screen now. You can see. Yeah. OK, so I do have a kind of add on slide deck that will incorporate the slides into the slide deck that Topeka was just showing. But when we talk about resource management, um, there's actually multiple aspects of this. You know, part of it's the tools, which I'll be showing you today. Um, but you also have to think through some of your processes, you know, what's your intake process, what's your resource request process, how do you um, manage negotiations for resources and prioritizations, and then also the people themselves, you know, how do you train them and get them up to speed on all that. Um, <clears throat> the first topic we're going to talk about is the tools. Now, with the tools, Microsoft has two different you know project management tools today one is project online or project server which has been around for i guess almost 20 years now um you know pretty robust tool set can do a lot of different things um but it you know it's very mature and really meant for enterprise pmo type capabilities the newer entry is project for the web which is built on the Power Platform. And over time, they will continue to add more and more capabilities into it. Um, the version of that today allows you to assign resources to tasks and the projects, but it doesn't really have the full resource management capabilities. Um, but I do wanna show you both just, so if you've heard about it, 
you'll kind of get an idea of what its capabilities are today. Um, but again, over time, Microsoft's going to add more and more capabilities to until it's on par with what Project Online provides as well. And from a licensing perspective, Microsoft is basically combined the two. So if you order like a project plan three license, you get both project for the web and project online. Um, so the licensing covers both tools. It just depends on which tool is a better fit for you. So with project for the web, <clears throat> let's cover that first. So if I go into Office 365 and I click on the project option on the waffle menu here, it'll take you to this page, which is called the project homepage. And at the bottom here, you'll see a link that'll take you over into Project Online. Um, but on this page is where you can start a basic project for the web project. So if I go up to here, I click on New Blank Project. It's going to open up Project for the Web. Now, the whole idea with Project for the Web is it's a slick, modern interface, um, pretty easy to use interface. Um, and it's all web-based, um, so you're not going to be using this with Microsoft Project on the desktop. It's purely browser-based today. So if I go into here, I want to rename this project. So I can give it a name, pick the start date. And at this point, <clears throat> I can start building out my project schedule. So if I have a planning phase, I want to define requirements. And then maybe I'll have an execution or executing phase. And let's say we have a testing phase. And if I go into here, I can, you know, pick task. I can make them subtask. Similar things that you would be doing maybe in Microsoft Project. Now, when we start talking about resource management, um, Project Online has the concept of the resource pool, which is something that you set up and you configure and you can synchronize with. Um, with Active Directory, but with Project for the Web, your resource pool is essentially your entire Active Directory. So you could assign anybody to work on this particular project. So if I go into here and I want to start assigning some of these tasks, I can just start typing someone's name and it's going to find that particular resource. Or if I want to go into here, I'm going to add Aaron. And first time I add someone be beyond myself, it'll ask me, do I want to create an Office 365 group? So here I can go in, I can create a group. I could also add it to an existing group. Now, if you're not familiar with the Microsoft 365 groups or the Office 365 groups, that's the security group that kind of underpins your Microsoft Teams, your SharePoint, um, Planner, a lot of your newer Microsoft capabilities from a foundational perspective underlying all that is one of these groups. So <clears throat> I'm just going to go into here. I'll add Topeka. And I can add more than one person if I want. Neil, while you do that, there's a question. Um, does Microsoft intend, to your knowledge, to sync project for the web and the traditional project online so that users have the option to work with the view of their preference on the same project. So today that's something that we could do using Power Automate. Um, we could set up that kind of synchronization. Um, they haven't really specified that on the roadmap. Currently they're kind of two separate products. But the plan is around 2026, 
Microsoft's going to have a convergence of the two and customers that are on project online, they will have a migration path over to the full blown project for the web or the new project online. Um, but yeah, if you want to do any kind of synchronization between the two platforms, we could build that out on Power Automate for you. All right, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add some scheduling fields. So I'm going to add start finish. And I'm just going to go into here, put some durations in. You can see just like Microsoft Project, it starts building out your project schedule. And you could start specifying dates if you want. Um, now, what's nice about this, though, is you'll notice up here you have this view selector so you could either look at it in the grid which is what we're looking at now the task list you could go to the board view and this will give you a planner like functionality so if i go into here i could um name these buckets so maybe this is going to be my backlog maybe this is going to be sprint one sprint two and then we can drag and drop items over into when we're going to work on them so maybe this will be our sprint one this will be sprint two and then if you want you could keep things on the uh the backlog you could also switch this view so if you want a kanban board style view to show whether or not something's been worked on yet you could go ahead and utilize that too I'm not going to do this yet because if i go to the timeline view this is where you get your Gantt view. And if I want to set up dependencies, I can just drag and connect the tasks together. I could also zoom out. So if I want to see a higher level of detail. The other nice thing about this too is if I want to make adjustments, I can just drag things around move things around. It's very user friendly, very easy to use. OK. Now, if we go back to the board view, <clears throat> if I were to update some of my task, just drag and drop to show it's in progress. You can see now the percent complete complete is 50 percent on this task. Uh, same thing if I move some things over to say they're completed now, we could do it that way as well. And as I go back to the grid view, you can see things are now struck out that they've been completed. I could also add percent complete here and see that there. OK, so again, it's it's a very modern, easy to use interface. Um, it's all web based. Um, but from a resource management perspective, you know, you will get the ability to assign resources to your projects. You will be able to capture a little bit of the demand, you know, how, how many days or how many hours. Um, but there's no, you know, deeper resource management capabilities than what I'm showing you right now. Um, now, from a Power BI perspective, we, we could report on some of this as well, just to get an idea who's working on what projects and what their demand is. But you're not going to be able to do things like what's their capacity. And then how does that capacity versus demand look? That's things that Project Online does very easily. Out of the box has all that capabilities, but Project for the Web's just not quite there yet. Now, the other thing Project for the Web doesn't have out of the box is time reporting. So even though I'm assigning these individuals to work on these projects, there is no timesheet component today. That is on Microsoft's roadmap. I think it's planned for you know maybe a year, year and a half out from now. Um, so in the meantime, what we've done is we've developed an application called Timesheet 360, which allows resources. This is a Power App, so it's built on top of the Power Platform, but allows resources to report time against those projects for the web projects. Um, it also has an approval mechanism as well, so that if you want to make sure someone can approve those items, they'll be able to go in and approve it. So you can see here if I go in and want to report time, I'll be able to see the different time periods and I can see what the status is. And then when I drill into here, there you can see there's that project that we just created. 
and then the resource can report how many hours they worked against that particular task. Um, we're working on a separate view. This is the hours per week, but there will be a separate view here that you could also do hours per day. Um, once they submit it, it'll go through the approval process and then on the roadmap is we'll apply these timesheet hours back to the project. Um, we can't do that today because Microsoft does not allow us through the API to update the task, um, but they're supposed to, it's already mid-December. They, they were supposed to open that up for us in December, but I suspect it might be early January at this point. Okay, so this is one option. Again, it's very light though currently. Um, if you are an enterprise PMO, you're trying to do any more you know, deeper kind of resource management, resource analysis, you're probably, that's not going to meet your needs. You're still going to look at project online. Um, before I move on, any questions with project for the web? Okay, so let me jump over to project for the web. And again, I have a, I have a, uh, PowerPoint deck that we'll, we'll add these slides to our overall presentation slide. We can make it available to you guys. But with Project Online, you will have the ability to do capacity planning. You can do demand management. Um, our intake app that uh, Topeka was mentioning, that's an example of the demand management where people can request projects. You can also do resource selection and optimization and then utilization tracking and reporting around all that through Power BI. So when we look at the resource management components and project online, you know, you're going to have the enterprise resource pool and then you're going to have the resources and different resource types. Um, you also can have generic resources that will represent roles or skills, which is important from a capacity planning perspective. You want to get an idea of how many developers do you have, how many testers do you have, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Project also Project Online also has what are called resource plans and engagements. So I'll do a quick demo of that. That allows you to do high level resource planning versus detailed in the project schedule task assignment resource planning. And then there's also a portfolio analysis capability where you can do what if analysis to see do you have enough resources to do the projects you're being asked to do. Um, and then finally, tying that all up, we still have the timesheet time tracking capability and then the overall reporting and analytics through Power BI. OK, so and in this slide deck, I have you know screenshots of all of these things. We'll make those available to you, but I'm just going to go ahead and do a quick demo. So when I go into here, one is if I go into the resource center, you'll see the resource pool. So with the resource pool, it can be synchronized with Active Directory. You can also add resource attributes to the resource pool. So the most common resource attribute is what's someone's role or what's someone's skill. But you could also add other attributes as well. Um, you know, what language do they speak? Where are they located? We had one customer that they had consultants. It was a professional services firm and uh, they needed to know where the closest home airport was for the consultants so that they could find the one closest to a particular location for a customer project. So you can add as many different resource attributes as you want so that you can then go in and use that for your reporting and your analytics. In this view here, you can see <coughs> the, the resources are grouped by their role. So these are all the analysts, these are all the consultants, so forth and so on. And then also you'll see at the top of each one of these is the generic resource for that particular skill set. So the generic resources are basically um, placeholders where we can go in and we could say, um, yeah, I, I don't know exactly who this person is that's going to be working on my project, but I know I need an analyst. And that'll come forward in your capacity planning. So as all the PMs are picking these resources to work on their projects, if you were to select a resource in the resource center and go up to resource assignments, 
you'll then be able to see everything that that resource is working on. What are all the projects? What are all the tasks? Et cetera, et cetera. And then if I want to see it more in a visualization, I can go to capacity planning. And then this will show me their overall capacity. And then this is the workload that's coming from different projects. Now it looks like I had two resources selected. Let me just select one. It'd be a little clear. There we go. So here you can see the yellow line is Topeka's capacity on a monthly basis. That's taken into account things like corporate holidays and maybe vacation time, things like that. And then the bars is the workload. What are the projects that they're working on? And where is that workload coming from? So with a, and this is, by the way, this is an out of the box view in project online. It's not Power BI or anything like that, um, but it does give you some visualization on what's going on. So you can see here in these months, she's not assigned any projects. Maybe you could put a project in that time frame for her to work on. Um, but there's other months where she's exceeding her capacity. You don't want to schedule any more work during those months. And maybe you want to shift some of that work to somebody else. And then down below here, you get more detail of exactly how many hours are coming from each project. So, uh, so Derek, I see your question. So this is plan three or plan five. When we get into the portfolio analysis, that's purely a plan five license capability. So here we have these out of the box views and there, there's some other sub views in here, but this is probably my favorite view. Um, so you can look at it in different ways. You can also go up to here, you know, if you're um, doing proposed bookings, you can go in and include proposed bookings as well. So if you're doing your project intake and you want to get an idea of what's been committed versus what's still proposed, you can toggle this on and off and it'll either bring in those proposed projects or exclude those proposed projects. Okay. So going back to the resource center, again, this is the overall resource pool, sync it with Active Directory, you set it up with the different roles and skill sets. And then as PMs are building their projects, they're going to select from the resource pool. So the way the PMs select their resources, if I were to go into a project, for example, if I go into here, you can see this project template has those generic pre generic resources pre-assigned. And what they're going to do is go up to build a team. And through build a team, they have access to that resource pool we were just looking at. And then on the right hand side is the current resources that are on that team. So in this case, we have all generic resources. But if I wanted to, I could select this <clears throat> and say, just show me all the analysts in the resource pool. So if I click on match, it filters it down to just the resources that have that particular skill set. Again, if I select a resource, those same views that I was just talking about in the resource center are also available through build a team. So now I can see what they're working on, what their capacity is. And if I decide I want this resource to work on my project and fulfill the analyst role, I just hit replace and it swaps out the analyst to Topeka. And if I were to do the same for other ones, so let's say MASH and myself. Now when we go back to the project schedule, you'll see it swapped out. Oh, helps if I edit the project. Hold on. You'll see it swapped out those generic resources for the named resources. So that's one way that the PM can go in, you know, add people to their team and then have tasks or, you know, they could also add tasks.
and then they can go ahead and assign that work to whoever. So this is the more traditional way of using Microsoft Project. You know, you pick resources from the resource pool, you assign them to task, and based on these assignments, how many days a task is or how many work hours in that task, you'll get an idea of what the overall demand is from that project for that resource. The, the one downside of this is it is expecting you to put in a certain level of detail, right? So if this is a long project, like six months, nine months, 18 months, the further you get out, the harder it is to have these level of task details be accurate. Um, you have a rough idea of when someone's going to be working on it, but as projects have been flow, it's it's not going to be 100% accurate. So another option that you have is you could use resource plans and engagements. So what a resource plan allows us to do is assign resources at a very high level, uh, basically at the project level. Um, and then you don't have to really worry about this level of detail, but you can go in and say this resource will work for so many hours per month on my project. So take a look at that. Let me close this. And I'm just going to discard those changes. So <clears throat> if I go into here, I have a couple projects that have um, a resource plan. So I'm going to go to this keep the lights on project. So this is an example of a project where for an IT department, a team has to do certain maintenance or support activities every month. Um, and you want to represent that in the resource pool so that you can represent that something's happening that's taken away their availability. So I'm just going to click on this icon here. It's going to open up project. And in Microsoft Project, <clears throat> so let me go back to the Gantt chart here. This project only has two tasks, the start date and the end date, and they're basically two milestones. So I could go into here and say it's, you know, starting on uh, January 1st, to, let's do of 2021. So we'll adjust this. And this is going to finish at the uh, we'll just do December 31st. OK, but again, it's just placeholders just to show when the project's going to start, when the project's going to finish. Notice no other tasks, no resource assignments. And if I switch my view here to the resource plan, with the resource plan, I can now go in and see in detail exactly when they're going to be working on these tasks. So these are called engagements and you can have more than one engagement per resource on a project. So if, for example, here you could say this is the default yearly allocation, but then maybe there's certain activities that you also want them to do. You could add that. These aren't tasks. They're similar to a task, but they're not tasks. They're simply engagements. Um, so, for example, with Jarrell, his default yearly allocation for 2021, you can see nothing's been allocated so far, but I can see on a monthly basis. So I could go into here and say I need, you know, 50% of his time. And just like in Excel, I could do a fill, you know, stretch it out to the end of the year. And maybe I know in, you know, June, July and August, I need more of his availability so I could increase it just during those time frames. Same thing for the other resources here. If I want, I could also add an engagement. So up here on the ribbon, I can add an engagement, give it a description. I can say when it's going to start. So let's say this is beginning of May. To the end of June. And we're going to need 50% of Topeka's time. So you can see it put that allocation out here. So with resource engagements, 
again, I'm doing high level project level planning um, that'll bubble up into those same views. So if I go back to the resource center, And if I were to look at Jarrell or Topeka, I'll see this project and its demand show up in here. So to see that, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and submit them. Now, if you wanna take your resource management process a step further, one thing that resource plans and engagements allow you to do is do resource requesting. And I'll show you that right now. Um, so that when a PM submits the engagements, they will go to whoever the resource manager is for these resources. And here you'll see whether something's proposed or committed or rejected. That's part of that resource request process. This is optional. You don't necessarily have to do this, but if you are looking to do it, do resource requesting inside the tool itself, the resource engagements give you that ability. So let me go back to here. And what I'm gonna do is select Topeka. And let me find Jarrell real quick. There he is. And you can see here resource request. So as a resource manager, this is the view they would look at. And there you can see our keep the lights on project. And we can see the new default yearly allocation for 2021 for Jarrell. And then you can also see the plan UAT for maintenance activities in the summer that I added for Topeka. So as a resource manager, I could look at this, I could approve it, I could reject it. I could also edit the engagement. So maybe I can't give them that much time. I could make changes to that allocation here. I could also add engagements, maybe, um, the peak is not available, but I can give them a different resource. I could do it that way too. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and accept these. I can put in a comment. But from the PM's perspective, <clears throat> I'm going to refresh this. And you should see the status for these change to approved or committed. Okay. Now, once this is committed and I publish this project, if I were to go back to the resource center and look at capacity planning, You can see there's that project to keep the lights on project. And if we want to make it a little bit clearer, we could also, let's unselect Jarrell. So see this light blue here, that's those new allocations that we just put in on that resource plan for Topeka. So again, I didn't have to build out a detailed test schedule of what's happening in May or June. I can just say I need that resource for either a certain percentage of time or so many hours that month, and it'll show up into reporting. So it's a nice thing to have in your toolkit um, when you're trying to do resource planning. You, you can still do the traditional way, do task level assignments. But if you want something that's a little bit higher level, lighter touch, you can do this. Now. You could also do a hybrid of the two. So for example, if I go back to here to the project <clears throat> and I look at project information, there's a setting here that's telling project online, where should it do that utilization calculation? So you have three options. Right now, this project's only using the resource engagements. That means it should ignore any task assignments. If I have it set to the project plan, it says ignore the resource plan, only use task assignments. And if you want to be very accurate, you could say use the project plan until a certain date. After that date, use the resource plan. So this is a good hybrid option, which if your PMs are good at 
maybe scheduling the next six weeks. But as you get further and further out, they become more and more inaccurate. You could go into here and set this to, let's say, the end of February or March 1st. And that's telling Project Online, use those task assignments up until March 1st. After that, rely on this resource plan information. So you kind of get the best of both worlds in that case. And this this date, you will just continue to push forward maybe every month. So at the end of January, we'd push it to April 1st. And to February, it'd go to May 1st. Okay. So everything I've showed you so far has been, you know, kind of getting resource data into the system, showing what that demand is. And, and doing some analysis on this. This is the out of the box reports, but from a Power BI perspective, we can kind of take it to the next level. So this is one of our report packs um, that we use to deploy to customers. And in that we have several different resource management dashboards. So in this one, this is our resource availability dashboard. And what this is showing is what's their demand versus capacity over time similar to what you were just seeing in the resource center this is availability over time and the, the different colors that you're seeing here are those different roles or resource groups and then the resource assignments what resources assignments do these uh, or what projects are these resources working on where is it coming from so you'll see some of these are coming from engagement some are coming from the schedule and then over here we have a heat map which is showing you when a particular resource is over allocated. So the way this would work is if I am a manager of a particular team, so for example, all the analysts, I can go into here, just pick on the analyst role, and now I can see what everybody's workload's looking like, what are they working on, where are they over allocated. And if I scroll over here, you can see it goes out to the end of next year. Maybe I also want to see consultants. And again, wherever you have the heat map, that resource is basically over allocated. All right. So again, this is the kind of visibility you'll start to get with Power BI. Some of the other reports, this is an overview of the resource pool itself. And if I want to see, you know, who are all the consultants? Who are all the analysts and quickly go in and look at it that way or if i want to look at the details of a particular resource or a demand or forecast you know long-term view and then <clears throat> and then taking it a step further you know we i'll talk about the timesheets in a minute but as those resources start reporting time we can then have some timesheet reports showing what people's actuals are that they spent on each project. Okay. Now, from a timesheet perspective, with Project Online, as you're assigning resources to task and you have the timesheet capability turned on, those tasks will be pre-populated onto the resources timesheets. So they can then go into here, they can start reporting their time, how many hours, you know, each day did they work on that task, or you could also have it by week. Note that engagements will not show up here, um, because again, engagements are purely for the resource planning process. They're not to report actuals against. So you would still want to have some task or some bucket task that people can report time against if you're purely only only doing the resource planning capability. So as people are reporting their time, they can go ahead and turn that in. And then when they do that, depending on how you have Project Online set up, these actuals will either just reside in the timesheet for timesheet reporting, or it'll pull it back into Project Online as an actual in the project. 
So if you're the PM, if you go into the approval center, you would then see these timesheet lines and status updates start to pop in here for approvals. Okay. Any questions from a tool perspective? I know we don't have a ton of time, so I'm going to, uh, I do want to talk about process as well for a few minutes. Was there any tool questions? Doesn't seem like it, Neil. Okay. Not in the chat window. So let me go back to my slide deck here. So if we've implemented resource management in a lot of customers, you know, the tool part of it is, I don't want to say it's easy because it's not always easy, but it is something that, you know, you can get set up and you can start utilizing. But you definitely need to have processes in place to handle how the tool is going to be used. And <clears throat> probably more importantly, there are going to be times where there's going to be resource constraints that pop up, um, you know, conflicting priorities, things like that. So when we go down to resource management processes, <clears throat> these are some of the processes that we see that typically will feed into your resource management solution. So you're going to have a project intake process. Um, how are projects being requested? How are projects being approved? How are you getting the demand or what the need is for those projects? Resource onboarding, how do resources get added to the resource pool? How do you assign or who's going to assign their different attributes? What role, what skill, what their rate is, things like that. Resource request process, you saw that with the resource engagements. How do you want that to operate? Who's going to do the approvals? Who's going to do the reviews? Task updates and timesheet submittals. Um, the timesheet submittals and task updates, there could be two different roles involved in that process. There could be the timesheet manager or the resource manager. Who's going to approve the timesheet? But then also, who's going to review and approve the time that gets committed back to the project. That's going to be the project manager. You also have a resource management review. Um, I recommend this being like a biweekly meeting where the resource managers and the PMs can get together and review what the resource demand is and then make some decisions on priorities. Um, doesn't mean every project would get reviewed. It would just be the projects where there's resource conflicts. You need to decide which which project's going to get the resource, and that's what needs to be discussed in that meeting. Whoops. Um, project prioritization it needs to be a part of it too, because you are going to have those conflicts. How are we going to decide what the priority is? And then also possibly resource offboarding. So when someone leaves the organization, they need to get inactivated in the resource pool, but also what about the existing work that's already been assigned to them? What's the process where PM is going to reassign that work to another resource? Who will that resource be? So you have to think through that process as well. This is something that we help customers with, work through these processes and develop these processes, but it's definitely something that you have to consider. The tool's not gonna fix everything. The tool's gonna help facilitate these processes. Um, yep, so this is some of uh, what I was just talking about. Any questions with the process side of it? Okay, I'll hand it back over to you. You, Topeka, I'll make these slides available in uh, in our main slide deck. So if you guys want a copy of it. Awesome. Thank you, Neil. Mm -hmm. um, we will be sending the slide deck, as Neil mentioned, and then um, Aaron also has the session recorded. So we'll send you a link to that on our YouTube channel. And you should be receiving a survey as well. And I think Aaron is going to post that right here in the chat window. So please do fill that out and um, thank you again for attending and we hope to see you all in the next 
Productivity Thursday session in uh, in 2021. Happy holidays.